me start by saying that Peter Terry was addicted to heroin. We were friends in college and continued to be after I graduated. Notice that I said I. He dropped out after two years of barely cutting it. After I moved out of the dorms and into a small apartment, I didn't see Peter as much anymore. We would talk online every now and then. AIM was king in pre-Facebook years. But there was a period where he wasn't online for about five weeks straight. I wasn't exactly worried. He was a pretty notorious flake and drug addict, so I assumed he just stopped caring. Then, one night, I saw him log on. Before I could initiate a conversation, he sent me a message. David, man, we need to talk. That was when he told me about the No End House. It got that name because no one had ever reached the final exit. The rules were pretty simple and cliche. Reach the final room of the building and you win $500. There were nine rooms in all. The house was located outside the city, roughly four miles from my house. Apparently, Peter had tried and failed. He was a heroin and who knows what the fuck addict. So I figured the drugs got the best of him and he wigged out at a paper ghost or something. He told me it would be too much for anyone, that it was unnatural, but I didn't believe him. I told him I would check it out the next night, and no matter how hard he tried to convince me otherwise, 500 sounded too good to be true. I had to go. So I set out the following night. When I arrived, I immediately noticed something strange about the building. Have you ever seen or read something that shouldn't be scary? But for some reason, a chill crawls up your spine. Well, I got that kind of feeling. And it only intensified as I opened the front door. My heart slowed. And I let a relieved sigh leave me as I entered. The room looked like a normal hotel lobby decorated for Halloween. A sign was posted in place of a worker. It read, Room one is this way. Eight more follow. Reach the end, and you win. Call me cocky, but I couldn't help but chuckle as I made my way to the first door. The first area was almost laughable. The decor resembled the Halloween aisle of a Kmart, complete with sheet ghosts and animatronic zombies that gave a static growl when you passed by. At the far end was an exit. It was the only door besides the one I had entered through. I brushed through the fake spider webs and headed for the second room. I was greeted by fog as I opened the door to room two. The room definitely upped the ante in terms of technology. Not only was there a fog machine, but a bat hung from the ceiling and flew in a circle. They seemed to have a Halloween soundtrack that one would find in a 99 cent store on a loop somewhere in the room. I didn't see a stereo, but I guess they must have used a PA system. I stepped over a few toy rats that wheeled around and walked with a puffed chest across to the next area. I reached for the doorknob, but my heart sank to my knees. I didn't want to open that door. I didn't know why either. A feeling of dread hit me so hard I could barely even think. Logic overtook me though, and after a few terrified moments, I shook it off and entered the next room. That's where things began to change. On the surface, it looked like a normal room. There was a chair in the middle of the wood paneled floor. A single lamp in the corner did a poor job of lighting the area though, casting a few shadows across the floor and walls. That was a problem though. Shadows. Plural. With the exception of the chair, there were others. I had barely walked in the door and I was already terrified. It was at that moment that I knew something wasn't right. I didn't even think as I automatically tried to open the door I came through. It was locked from the other side. That set me off. Was someone locking the doors as I progressed? There was no way. I would have heard them, right? Was it a mechanical lock that set automatically? Maybe, but I was too scared to really think about it. I turned back to the room and the shadows were gone. The chair's shadow remained, but the others were gone. I slowly began to walk. I used to hallucinate when I was a kid, so 
I wrote off the shadows as a figment of my imagination. I began to feel better as I made it to the halfway point of the room. I looked down as I took my steps, and that's when I saw it, or didn't see it. My shadow wasn't there. I didn't have time to scream. I ran as fast as I could to the other door and flung myself without thinking into the room beyond. The fourth room was even more disturbing than the previous three. As I closed the door, all light seemed to be sucked out and put back into the previous room. I stood there, surrounded by darkness, not even able to move. I'm not afraid of the dark, and I never have been, but this time I was absolutely terrified. All sight had left me. I held my hand in front of my face, and if I didn't know what I was doing, I would never have been able to tell. Darkness doesn't describe it. I couldn't hear anything. It was dead silence. When you're in a soundproof room, you can still hear yourself breathing. You can still feel your pulse. You can still hear yourself being alive. I couldn't. I began to stumble forward after a few moments. My rapidly beating heart was the only thing I could feel. There was no door in sight. Wasn't even sure there was one this time. But just as I thought I had figured it out, the silence was broken. Broken by a low hum. I felt something behind me. I spun around wildly but could barely even see my nose. I knew it was there, though. Regardless of how dark it was, I knew something was there. The hum grew louder and closer. It seemed to surround me, but I knew whatever was causing the noise was also in front of me, too, itching closer with every breath I drew. I took a step back. I never felt that kind of fear. I can't really describe true fear. I wasn't even scared I was going to die. I was scared of what the alternative was. Then, the lights flashed for a second, and I saw it. Nothing. I saw nothing, and I know I saw nothing there. Then, the room was again plunged into darkness, and the hum became a wild screech. I screamed in protest. I couldn't hear this goddamn sound for another minute. I ran backwards away from the noise and fumbled for the door handle. I turned and fell into room five. I can tell a monster from 